So this is a little review of uh, the MG4 after, what have I done, 2,752 miles. So I've had it about three months, driven it a lot, done quite a few longer trips in it, used rapid chargers, done all the things you will do in an electric car. And I just wanted to kind of do a little bit of an update because when I first drove this car, I raved about it. I've driven two and a half, nearly 3,000 miles. I'm still raving about it with one or two glaring exceptions. So this is the MG4 and this is the Fully Charged Show. The Fully Charged Show is generating positive energy with its live events all around the world. Next up, it's Fully Charged Live Canada. Click the top right of the screen to get your tickets today. So I think uh, point number one I want to make, when I've done really long drives, 180, 190 mile drives, and then I've got out of the car, at my age, I'm not grunting. So a grunt-free exit from a vehicle is a massive plus. It's a big, big blue tick. Uh, so it's a really comfortable car to drive. It's got really good visibility. I've got completely used to it now. I don't even think about it. The fuel efficiency is, if you're careful, really, really impressive. So on my, uh, when I drove up to the Harrogate fully charged live show, which is was about 172 miles from my house to, to Harrogate, I was nudging five miles to the kilowatt hour on motorways. It was a nice day, it was warm, it wasn't raining. All those things help. But I think, you know, uh, between four and five miles to the kilowatt hour, I thought was my average. But now when I look at the, my average over the last, uh, well, how many miles? 1,519, 1,600 miles. I've averaged 3.6 miles to the kilowatt hour, which is much less good. But, that, but a huge amount of the journeys I do in this car are 10, 15 miles to the shops, to the train station, to the other shops, you know, to the gym, because, you know, I'm always down the gym. Um, you know, those are all lots and lots of short journeys. So I'm assuming that's what's lowered it. I don't know, really, because on long trips when I've kept an eye on it, I'm definitely 4.5, 4.8, you know, getting close to five miles to the kilowatt hour. So that's a bit of a mystery. So it's not as fuel efficient as I thought. So now some basic stats about the MG4. So there's two types. Well, okay, there's three types, but there's two main types. There's standard range and long range. And this is long range trophy. So this is posh. This is the posh one. Uh, the, but the interesting thing is about the batteries, okay, and the cost. So the standard range is a 26,995 or about 240 pounds a month if you're leasing it. Uh, the trophy is 29,995, so 30,000 uh, pounds. And that costs, uh, what's the, now the leasing of that is about 299, so 300 pounds a month. That's, that's roughly right. Uh, I'm sure you can get variations of that, probably higher, probably lower. Uh, this vehicle has 61.7 kilowatt hours of usable battery. So it's actually a 65 kilowatt hour battery, but that buffer makes the battery last longer. An important point when people talk about throwing away batteries, which you never will. The, uh, that is, uh, uh, um, got a lot of notes here. The nickel manganese cobalt battery in this vehicle. So high power, high energy density, um, uh, uh, and and it and that's all I can say about it. <laughs> the standard range, though, this is what's interesting. The standard range has lithium ferrophosphate, which is also now being used in Teslas, and lithium ferrophosphate has no cobalt, none, not even less cobalt, none. And this is really important because all the petrol that's being burnt around the world, all the diesel being burnt around the world, is being treated with cobalt. That is a huge user of cobalt. I just want to make that point. I've said it hundreds of times. I love saying it. You need cobalt to clean up fossil fuel. You don't need it for batteries. In future, that will be more and more the case. The difference is the uh, lithium ferrophosphate, LFP, are slightly lower energy density, uh, but they can have far, far more charge cycles, charge and disc cycles. They last longer. Rapid charging, I will get into this later on, but the official speeds are 125 for the standard range and 135 kilowatts of maximum charge speed for the trophy. But I have had a bit of a different experience with that, but we'll get back to that in a moment. Um, 0 to 60, 7.5 seconds, 
critically important that is, absolutely vitally important. Uh, so it's not a sporty car, top speed 99 miles an hour, I can't imagine you'd ever do that. Rear wheel drive, which I really like, which means that you've got quite a tight turning circle because the front wheels only do steering, which means you can turn it around so much easier than a Tesla Model 3, for example, or a VW ID4. All those cars, uh, this is so much easier to park and get into places. I really do like that very much. Um, the key rivals are uh, the Renault Zoe, the Nissan Leaf, the Corsa E, the AuraCat. They're all roughly the same size, close, similar price. Um, and there is an all-wheel drive version of this coming soon. I wouldn't be interested in that personally, but maybe there are people who think having that having that is important. So that is the, the basics. One of the other things which we can't show you today because I haven't got the gizmo because I've got to get in touch with MG to get it. And I haven't really needed this since I've had this car is the vehicle to load. So you can, like on the uh, Hyundai Ioniq 5 and one or two other vehicles, you've got a little adapter you plug into your power outlet on, or power input on the car and you've got a three pin socket in the UK or, or you know, a domestic socket that you can plug in, you can boil a kettle, you can run a DJ deck, which I'm constantly doing. And the one thing that is the real bugbear of this car is got to be easily fixed. And it, everyone mentions the same thing. I'm not gonna say what it is yet. I'm gonna show you, because it drives me crazy. So here is the real bugbear with this car. And Believe me, every single person who re responded to my tweet about this, asking what they thought of the car, they all said exactly the same thing. Everyone did. 100% of people, whether they liked the car, hated the car, were indifferent to the car, they all said the same thing. And normally it does it up this bit of road. I'm going to see if it will do it. It's done it every time I've driven up here, dozens of times. There, did it! Yes! <laughs> so pleased. That is the single most annoying thing. That is lane keeping assistant. Now, the lane keeping assistant is on the Tesla, it's on lots of cars. It's very, very common now. It's not an unusual thing. I've driven, I can't even remember all the cars I've driven with it. And occasionally it's a bit annoying when you're on a narrow British road with not that clear road markings. That bit of road there has got a solid white line in the middle to stop people overtaking on a hill like we've got here. So I'm going to pull near that Bentley and Range Rover. No, it's not doing it. See, now it won't do it. But anyway, it freaks out. But what it is, instead of a lane keeping assistant, which is an intelligent robot that gently guides you to the center of the lane, this is a completely unruly five-year-old on a sugar high who just grabs the steering wheel and wrenches it. And you're going, get over yourself. So you can turn it off. You press the, the car button here. I'm going to pull over to do this because it's not safe to do it while you're driving. <clears throat> so you press the, 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 the little car button, which is sometimes a little bit slow. I will now set it to Eco, which is what I prefer driving in. And then with the MG Pilot Lane Keeping Assistant off, then it goes Lane Keeping Assistant disabled. Yeah, why did I press it? Because I want it now. It doesn't do it and it's fine. But you've got to do that every time you drive. It turns itself back on every time and this is to do with its NCAP safety rating. It's taken me a while to find that out. So it's automatically on for, uh, that's its normal setting is it's on. It is, it is, because I, I thought, oh, this is just me. I'm being fussy about it. No, everyone has said the lane keeping assistant is a disaster. It's really annoying. It's dangerous. It's stupid. Uh, you know, on British roads, it just doesn't work. It's rubbish. So look at that turning circle though. There's a plus immediately. So good, the turning circle. But that drives me bonkers because you forget. So you get in the car and it start, you don't have to do anything to start it. It just goes off you go, no trouble. Then it goes beep, 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 and starts wrenching the steering wheel. Whether it works on a, I've never tried it on a motorway slash freeway because I've turned it off because it drives me bonkers. So maybe it's useful on a longer drive like that. I don't think it is. I don't know. It just doesn't work. Adaptive cruise control works beautifully. So that's, I've now set that. I'm not, I've taken my foot off all the pedals. This works really well. If there's a car slower than you in front, it slows down. If, if you're set at, a, say, 70 miles an hour on the motorway and the vehicle in front is doing 65, it stays at 65 until it's safe to move. You can adjust the speed really easily with the button on the steering wheel. 
you know, that is faultless, simple to use, easy, not stressful. Why can't that be done? So what I'm hoping is it's a software update. Whatever does the lane keeping assistant does not work. And I'm, I know it's going to be a software bug because there's going to be, um, you know, uh, uh, sensors around the car that, and cameras, and it's just it's just not calibrated right, and it's just annoying because if it, if you could just permanently turn it off, it wouldn't matter. I wouldn't even mention it, but you can't permanently turn it off, so it constantly reminds you how bad it is, and it's really really annoying. But the actual range that I've experienced, okay, so at the moment it's at 72% of its charge and it has 188 miles of range. And that I've seen is pretty accurate. That's within one or two miles of, the, of what you will actually cover. So I've kept an eye on that. It, the, so the range estimate on the, on the dash in front of me is pretty, pretty close to, the, to what you actually experience driving the vehicle. And so the real range is in the 260-ish miles on a full charge, which is a kind of irrelevant statistic because you never do drive it from 100% to 0%. When would you do that? I mean, you'd only do it if you were going to test the vehicle and film it. So we could do that. We could see how far it goes before the battery literally runs out and you stop which other channels do, and uh, if we had the time and the budget, maybe we do, but it's quite boring. Um, in real world terms, you would drive 170, 180, 200 miles without a second thought, because you're nowhere near empty. And that is a long way to drive in one go, really a long way. We're talking three and a half to four hours of driving to do that. Who does that without stopping? You know, you need to stop and all that stuff. But the flip side of that is, using it as people mostly use cars, you're doing 20, 25, maybe 30 miles a day. Well, that's gonna last you more than a week. So you don't have to charge it every two seconds. Support our Stop Burning Stuff Patreon and help us tackle misinformation about electric vehicles and clean energy. So really to sum up, this car is, has been proven now over nearly 3,000 miles to be really, really good, really reliable, really easy to use. It, you know, the glitches are, in it are kind of annoying little niggles rather than major complaints. It drives really well. It's, it's a really safe car. You know, there's all those things. And if you think about it, there's no question, it's not as good as a Tesla Model 3. Even the, the bottom of the range Tesla Model 3 is way better than this car. I'm not going to argue about that. But this car is 12 thousand pounds cheaper that's about fifteen and a half sixteen thousand dollars or euros so it's a lot cheaper and you get a hell of a lot for your money it's really really impressive car everyone that i heard from who owns these or leases them or drives them regularly absolutely loves it except for one guy <laughs> one guy really hated it but the 99 others absolutely loved it so you know it, it, it I, I think it's a it's been a it's not been a disappointment having this car this year and having it for the last three months. I, when I've had the choice, genuinely, this is not a word of a lie, when I've had the choice, which I don't often get with my wife, but I had the choice of driving this or the Tesla, I've picked this. It's just easier to get in and out of things and to get around corners, especially around here with narrow lanes. I love this car, it's fantastic. Anyway, that's all. Uh, do the subscription thing, I don't even care. Go on, subscribe if you haven't already. You may as well, it doesn't cost you anything. Tell your mates about the Fully Charged Show. Come along to our live shows when we're in your continent. And uh, as always, if you have been, thanks for watching.